Greetings in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus. This is Pastor Pogela. Uh, I'm going to share with you the word of God this afternoon from the book of John chapter number 9. John chapter number 9. And um, I gave my message a, 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 a title to say, I have what I needed. And before we can continue, let me pray first. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, this is a wonderful day and we thank you. We thank you for your word that is a bread of life to us. And we thank you that as we are about to partake on this table, Lord, share with us, enlighten us. And oh God, we are praying that may we be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Amen. We're going to read from the book of John chapter number 9, verse number... Let's start from verse number 6 and we're going to skip other verses and go to verse 23. And it says, When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made a clay of the speckle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation the scent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Verse 23, therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I know is that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What is he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? And verse number 30 says, The man answered and said unto them, Where herein is a marvelous thing that you know, that you know not from hence he is and yet he hath opened my eyes so as i said the title of my sharing this afternoon is i got what i wanted i got what i wanted and the the, the heading to the chapter it says the man that was born blind is healed and this afternoon i just want as to relate to the story of this man to the story we don't we don't know how old he was but when they questioned his parents they say he is of age it means that he was responsible enough to answer the questions that were asked by the pharisees and everybody else so this man was born blind and uh, we all know that a person who is born blind what do they do we all know how do they look like and most of the time in life we meet people or we are surrounded by people who identify or who call us based on how we look like or what the condition of our life is. And uh, this man, I believe that he was suffering from the issue of him being blind. You know, uh, there are certain things that we struggle with in life. There are certain things that when we, we encounter them or when we have them, they make us to be you know to look at ourselves and think that we are not worth it and this man found himself in that condition the bible says he was brought up or he grew up being blind so we all of us we want to be accepted and we want to fit in in life and sometimes we don't know how to fit in because of our condition because of our situations and this man was one of those people that wanted to fit in i believe he he, he wanted to be you know he wanted to see he wanted to see what other people see. He wanted to look like other people. And most of the time, the conditions of our lives, my goodness, the conditions of our lives makes people to discriminate us. The conditions of our lives makes people to look at us and marginalize us. And, 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 and I believe that this is what was happening to this man who was, who was born blind. And it, 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 it also shows it 
shows us that uh, uh, we are all bothered by problems because the problem that bothers you makes you look a little bit different from who is next to you. As I said, we find ourselves surrounded by people who are better, that when we look at them, we see them that they are better off than us. And because you are different, it makes you to look at yourself and makes you to think that uh, you, you, you are nothing compared to other people. It brings a disadvantage. It was a disadvantage to him to be born with such, with such a condition. Number two, it was making him to compare himself with other people. And this is what I normally say. I normally say comparison is a labor word of self-inflicted pain. When you compare yourself to the next person, it does not matter what they have. It does not matter how they look like. Maybe you think they look beautiful more than you. Maybe they are driving a better car than you. Maybe their business is growing more than yours. Maybe their ministry is blooming more than yours. But comparison is a labor word to self-infliction pain. Some of us, we are going through pain because we compare ourselves to other people. Some of us, we go through uh, 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 discouragement. Some of us, we are going through, we are going through a lot of things. Because of what? Because we have entered the world of comparison. And comparison is a labor word to self-inflicted pain. And this guy also went through that. He, he put himself in that world whereby he inflicted himself with pain to say, I want to see again. I want to see. I want to see. And again, one of the things that takes us, you know, that, that makes us to, to sit and to stay in, the, in that world of pain is assumption. Assumption is also the root of what we deal with in life and we, we end up not appreciating what we have in life because we're living our lives by assumptions. You know, you meet people at the mall, they are holding hands, they are a couple, you think that they are happy. And here you are, you are with your husband or you are with your wife, and you look at other people and think those people are happy, more than happy than we are. You know, and, 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 and sometimes we find that people are painting a picture to the outside world and they're giving us a version of a life that they are not living when they are home. So assumption also makes us to have to 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 inflict ourselves with pain to inflict ourselves with worry and worry is not good we, we 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 read from the book of philippians apostle paul encourages us with this words that we must never worry he says do not worry do not be anxious of anything and this boy he grew up being anxious to say i want to see he, he said, I want to see. I have never, never, ever had a picture. I have never seen anything. People around me, they can see colors. People around me, they can see this. Little did he know that there will be a day when Jesus will answer his cravings. Hallelujah. Cravings can be good and also they can be bad. But meeting with Jesus, his meeting with Jesus eliminated all his life cravings. You know, and, and sometimes we think that, you know, when you deal with one issue, uh, it's over. Somebody will be saying, I want to win a lottery. And after winning a lottery, then uh, what? Your problems become, uh, you know, you, you encounter more problems than what you have before. So this man, he meets Jesus. And after meeting Jesus, he gets healed. He gets healed. And the Bible says Jesus healed him in an unusual way because your problem and your neighbor's problem are not the same. And the way Jesus heals you is not the way he's going to heal the next person. And Jesus spit on the ground and he do, he, you know, he, he takes the mud and put it on his eyes and say, go and wash in, in, in the river of Siloam. And the Bible says when he came back, he came back healed. His craving of healing. Him being, you know, him being able to see was was dealt with. And then he was healed in an unusual way. Your case is different, as I said. When Jesus approached you in life, he will never approach you the way he approached your, your, your sister or your brother or your husband or whoever that you know. Your case is different. So Jesus is going to approach you differently. He's going to approach you based on your cravings, based on your wishes. 
Hallelujah. And this afternoon, I just want to say to you, receive your miracle. And the receiving of your miracle does not mean that it is the end of your problem, but it might be the beginning of other problems. Listen, this man was born blind. Jesus heals him, but he encounters another, um, another problem where the Pharisees, where people that he knew were questioning his healing. You know, people that we know will question our miracles. People that we know will question what Jesus is doing in our lives. That's why I'm saying you might he might deal with this issue today, but tomorrow another one is rising. The questions of other people. But Jesus Christ is, is, is a man who answers all questions. And this man, I like his answer in, 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 in those verses that we read. I love his answer. I love his answer. He says, I don't care how you label Jesus. I don't care what you call him. I don't even care what you are saying about him. I, one thing that I know is this. I was blind, but now I can see. I have what I wanted. I have what I have always wished for. Even if other problems can rise, do not focus on the rising problems, but focus on the miracle that Jesus has done for you, the one that you have always wanted. Do not focus on the questions of the Pharisees. Some of the people that are going to come into your life to discourage you and question your miracle are the people that you trusted, are the people that you you, you thought they are in, I, I mean, in leadership leadership, the people that you thought they are spiritual leaders, that, that they will celebrate with you. You know, the only thing that you wanted that day when you get your miracle is for people to celebrate with you. But but the, the case becomes different. People question, how did Jesus do this? How can he do this on a Sabbath day? How can he do this on this man? Because, because of what? Because of the condition. People enjoy us suffering. Other people, they, they like to see us not moving from the condition that we we are in but Jesus Christ is a different man he confronts our problems and he sought them out for us because he wants to see us moving from one level to another level this man was blind yes he was blind and the Bible says he was a beggar and he was not begging because he was broke he was begging because of his condition some of the things we do them not because you know not because of other things but because of our conditions you find yourself selling yourself low because of your condition. But Jesus is here to change your situation. It's not about money sometimes, but it's about what is affecting your economical situation. It's not about money. Maybe your condition has affected too much of your, of your economical uh, life, of your finances. And Jesus will deal with the root cause of your problems. Maybe because of this, then you become dead, you become dead. But Jesus, when he comes, he deals with the root cause of your problems. He challenges the roots of your problems. He heals you from your blindness so that you can no longer be a, a broke, you know, a, a, a broke beggar. So that you can be something that is better than what people see. Hallelujah. So don't look at your mistake. Don't look for, you know, for, for mistakes that are there. There, there. there are a lot of things that we can say. Maybe some of us, we are not physically blind, but we are financially blind. There is something that is blind in your life. There is something that causes blindness in your life. I am here to say to you, do not work against God. Do not work against Jesus. Work together with him. Work together with Jesus. And when you work together with Jesus, he will heal he will you know he will deliver you from the roots he will make sure that your from the roots of your core of your problem everything is sorted out and Jesus Christ did this for this man because he knew that if he can heal him from his blindness he will never ever be a beggar again and Jesus Christ is here he is the man of the moment even in this time where we are facing this this situation of COVID-19 he is the man of the moment he wants to heal you from whatever situation he wants to take you from what so that you can also have a testimony to say I have what I have been looking for I don't know what you're looking for but Jesus has got what you are looking for 
Hallelujah. So this man, Jesus, when he restored him, he restored his name. He restored his integrity. He restored his economical life. He restored his identity. He restored relationships. He restored his peace. He restored his expectations. You know, sometimes when we go through situations, we lose our peace. We lose our peace. You lose your joy. When you go through difficult times, some, some of us, we have even lost our, our, our identity, our integrity. This man, we only read him as a blind beggar. We don't know his name. We don't know his name. So it shows you that his identity was dealt with. His, his integrity was also dealt with. His vision was also dealt with. But when Jesus comes into your life, when Jesus deals with the root cause of your problems, he restores all that. What, what, what is Jesus saying? The word of God says in the book of Joel that I will restore back what the locust has eaten, what the canker worms has destroyed. So God, when you work together with God you work together with the restorer of everything he restores everything he does not just restore what you only need he restores even what you never ask him for he restores what you have never prayed for because that's what he does he says in the book of Isaiah 62 verse number two that I will give you a new name I will give you a new. so a new name a, a good name is better than riches that's what the book of Proverbs says so God is about to give you your name back when he heals you he gives you your name back when he heals you he gives you your identity back when he heals you he gives you your, your 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 relationships back some of us we have lost relationships with people that we were close with your mother your father you are no longer talking to them but I'm here to say work together with Jesus he will restore back what the locust has, has destroyed he will restore back what everything has you know has brought you and what you thought that you don't have anymore Jesus is here to bring it back he will give you back your influence I normally say that people who work with God are people of influence. You will never work with Jesus and never be influential. When you relate with Jesus, you are relating with a man of influence. When you relate with Jesus, you are relating with a man who makes you to sit in the government of influencers. You will never be with Jesus and never be an influencer. You will be you you will be a person of impact. You will be a person who will be you know, you will be look for this man was being sought after they wanted answers from him people will come to you for answers the bible says in the book of Isaiah uh, it says that people will come you know they will come to the to the to, to the shadow of this tree they will come and they will inhabit in the shadow of this tree the bible says that even the birds of the field they will come and build nest upon this tree so you are the tree that Jesus wants to that Jesus wants to restore back you are that kind of a tree that the birds of the air will come and build nests. People will get comfort from you. But the thing that is needed here is for you to work with Jesus. Be like this man. People will question your miracle, but you will know that the man who did this miracle, he is the man that is, you know, that is so much uh, 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 of influence. Jesus was a man of influence. Hence, I'm saying that you can never work with him and never be influential. People will look for you. People will look for you. People will, will know that God has really transformed your life. He does not change your life only for, for you to gain glory, but he also changes your life for him to get the glory. Your vision, you will get it back. I don't know what you were wishing for. I don't know what you see. I don't know what you have, you know, you have always wished for, but I'm here to say to you today work with Jesus some of us our situation you know you go through difficult situation you lose your peace you lose your peace but Jesus is here to restore that back you you lose your joy he will restore it back the Bible says in the book of Philippians that he will give you the peace that surpasses all human understanding no human mind can think about it no human mind can be able to explain it because the things that are from God they can never ever be explained by our human uh, uh, human intelligence uh -uh. the Bible says in the book of, of Corinthians that the spirit 
spiritual things are spiritually descent. So when they come to us, they come to us in a spiritual way. And because they are spiritual, you can never explain them in your own intelligence. They need the heavenly wisdom. They need people to be spiritual for them to know and to understand that this is what God has done for this man. So even if they question your miracle, even if they question it, have the answer for them. Even, they, even if they question the restoration of your life, your integrity, your finances, your marriage, your, your, your joy, your peace, your everything, everything that you have lost, when they question it, have answer for them. Be like this man. He said, one thing that I know, I don't know, I don't know about you, I don't know how you look at him, but one thing that I know is that I was blind, but now I can see. He gave me my side bag. I have what I have always wanted. I don't know what is it that you have always prayed for. I don't know what is it that you have always wished for. But Jesus Christ is here to work together with him. Don't work against him. Don't talk bad about him. He is here to bring back that dignity that you have been always crying for. May the Lord God bless you. May he restore your life. May he give you back what you have been praying for. May he, God Almighty, be, you know, allow him to, to make things easy for you. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for this precious message. And I pray for our viewers that Lord God Almighty restore that life back. Restore the joy of that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are the restorer. And after you have this, after you have restored, no man can take it away from us. We thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' blessed name, we thank you, Lord. Amen.